Okay, what's up you guys? Today I'm going to show you how to make uh, this tear out gun layered loop type deal. And I'll probably go in and do more work to this later and make another tutorial about it, but this is enough right here to get us started, so... Um, We'll skip the drums for now, and I will go into the layering first. So, um, we have one, two, three, four, five layers here. The sub, which is kind of like a little stabby, uh, distorted triangle, I think, with some uh, noise on it, making a little stab. Then this layer, which is one of the synths I'm gonna show. That's uh, it playing an E, and then this is a lower E, like an octave lower E. And then the only thing I'll show is I went in here and chopped the, chopped the tail off of both of these. So, the next layer is going to be this little boopy layer, uh, and then pitched up an octave. Right? Um, and the next layer, oh, and this one for the uh, pitched up layer. I changed the stretch type or whatever, the uh, resample mode to mono because it just makes it a little like grungier. And then I did some stuff in the pre-computed effects right here. I uh, did a low shelf EQ, I think is what this knob does. Turned the boost up a little bit and then clipped it. Just makes it again a little grungier, a little more digital sounding. Um, then this. this effects layer, which is uh, just a sample that I had that I uh, cut the tail off of. Um, and then finally, and I, I'm not gonna show you how to make this one, I'll show you how to make this one, and this one, and this. Uh, I'll show those three, the synthesis, but this one is just, you can use any effect sample. It's just kinda adds some digitalness to it, so like without it. You can probably hear it if you close your eyes better. Without. With. Right, so just add some digitalness. Um, and then, this is like a pan hit sample that I recorded. And then high pass the shit out of. Uh, and it changes. And pitches down an octave. So the layers change here, right? This one goes from high to low, this one goes from low to high, this one doesn't change, and this one goes from high, low to high. No, high to low there. <clears throat> okay, and then so they are all also following this pitch envelope here. Now the way that this works, I do this trick on almost all my tracks. I use this in almost everything that I make. Um, so if you look here, you have your pitch thing, and this is uh, routed onto here, and it's done the same for all these, right? They're all linked up to that pitch. 50% uh, would leave it at the bass pitch, which is E. And then if you look here, this number is 54.16666, which just so happens to be one semitone up. This one is 62 point, uh, you know, 6.625, which is 62.5. And then the final one is 666, I think. It's a devil's number. Yeah, it's 0.66666. And then these numbers at the end are just what FL um, rounds to because they're not as precise uh, as like a... It probably has something to do with, if you know programming, the fact that they run off of floats or integers or some shit like that. I don't know that much computer programming, but I do know that that's a limitation that I think floats have. Um, but yeah, uh, and if you don't know programming, don't worry about don't worry about that. That's not important at all. Uh, but the way that you can get these numbers, don't want y'all to see my videos. I got some weird stuff in there. Uh, not really. Um, the way you get those numbers is you take 50. So if you look right here, we have, this is the 50% mark. There are 12 steps up and 12 steps down from 50. So if we take 50, divide it by 12, each of our steps is going to be 4.166 uh, repeating. So let's say we wanted to go up three semitones. We multiply this by three, 
you get 12.5, add that to 50, and that's how we get this one here, which is 625. 625. So if we do it again to get that 666, uh, we would be doing 50 divided by 12. Uh, let me see, times four semitones, um, which equals that plus 50. 66666 repeating. You got it? Okay, so that's how that works. Uh, and that's just basically an easy way to do like E E E E F um G G G G F E E E F G sharp, I think. Uh or no G and then G sharp. So bum, 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 bum. one semitone, three semitones, one semitone, E. One semitone up, G, right? So that's how you make that uh, type of deal. And then um, I guess from there, we'll just jump into the synthesis. I'm trying to move quick because I have to leave for work very soon. But um, is there anything else there? No, I don't think so. So the next thing that I will show is how to make each layer. So we're going to go... This is the most base form of what the uh, what we're starting with this one. So the way that we make this is uh, I started with the gross wave table, add an envelope to the pit to the level. And then I also add another envelope to the wave table position, which is called frame in this one, the wave table frame that it's on. Add a little noise. See, and then here's my that's the first hit, the first set of green notes. This is the second one. I know it doesn't sound like it yet, but we'll get there. Then I saturated it. And so the, the level on this is also being modulated by that first envelope. This one, the drive, is being modulated by the first envelope. Then this second envelope comes in again. I'm doing a little... uh notch filter that goes down and it just kind of gives it that form and t sound right so having them move in the same direction but you know different amounts uh, i'm pretty sure yeah this one's significantly higher so it gives that form and t sound then some more distortion and these are both also routed to the second envelope, which I think is a little just sharper so that it, you know, while the volume is up, while the uh, amplitude is up, the filters move more. You know, if they just followed, if I just use this for uh, these as well, then basically like the quietest part right here wouldn't get recorded. And you can do that, but it's just different. You know, they add different tones, makes it a little stabbier, if you will. Same thing. Uh. You know, my amplitude envelope is going to be on this distortion as well. Then moving into the effects, the old five disperser stack. So one, two, ooh, three, ooh, four, ooh, oh, and it's just four. And that's actually, there's a reason for that. It's because if you do five dispersers in a row, it'll actually make you nut. So be careful of that. Um, and then, um, yeah, that's. That's 100% fact. I would show you, but I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not going to do that to you guys or to me. Not on, not on a video, at least. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being stupid. Yeah, it's just stacking dispersers. There's, I feel like the nut explanation is as good as any other explanation I could give. Every producer that tries to explain what dispersor does, they're just like, eh, it's the, the frequencies of the waves and then just way more thwackier. Everybody sounds like carnage when they're trying to explain what the fuck Disperser does. Nobody knows. It just sounds good. Makes it wetter. I think Mr. Bill's explanation is the best. It's just a wetness type deal. It makes it squishy. Uh, so then reverb, and this, re this reverb is gated by the, uh, or, yeah, gated by the envelope uh, of the amplitude. And then a flanger, which is really just acting as a comb it's not moving right the depth is at zero and then the feedback's kind of up i'm not going to change it to show it but that's what that basically is uh then we have distortion just making it chunky dynamics 
and this acts as another gate to that tail there. Like if I turn this off, right, you, you hear how it cuts the tail early? Um, and the reason for that is because this, you know, anytime the volume is below this, uh, this threshold here, it goes, it does a negative eight point to some kind of math and makes it go down. <laughs> That's the technical explanation of that. Um, but yeah, all you need to know is it's a gate and it also compresses the highs a little bit like the highest volume parts and the lowest are gated down. Um, so moving on. Then we have an EQ, cutting the lows and boosting the mids a little, or the mid highs. Fruity Convolver. You know, all I did I think here was change the chamber that it's in, the impulse. Saturation. This one's special and I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but it's basically a triple OTT stack. This is doing nothing, this is doing nothing. And it's just, uh, you know, this is my EQ. It's not changing anything. This is just something I use as like a little fat rack. Then OTT, this is doing nothing. I'm not even gonna go into it because all the knobs are off. Um, and then the way that I have this working is I have my three things. Uh, depth is the amount, time is the time. And so when I change this, it changes all three of my OTT's times. And I wish I hadn't changed it, but, and then the compression changes the depth. And then this, I'm not gonna move these just. You know, you know, this corresponds to this, this, to this, this, to this. So if you wanted to do exactly what I did, it's three OTTs with these settings. Um, and the next thing that we have on this is um, just some more uh, distortion and a V chord. So we end up with that, which is basically this. Right? That's the whole sound. And then the reason you're like, oh, that sounds a little different though, it's just because I put some EQing onto it again. So that's the first sound. Second sound, moving real quick because I got to leave for work very soon. <laughs> oh, I missed one thing. The other thing in here, what this does, let me turn, no, let me turn this out. <laughs> It's just a pitch drop and it goes pretty far. It goes two octaves up, just makes it stab. That's a good uh, tip for tear out or anything like that. You always want to make shit stabbier. So the reason I remembered that is because this one has the same trick on it. So that's without the pitch drop. That's with the pitch drop, without, with. And I have my triangle analog here, a little sample on there. And it's also being affected by the pitch drop. Like a little pan sound. Also kind of Tokyo uh, drift sounding to me. Now this is the most important part of this one probably. Um, we have this noise, which the slope is being modulated by the amp modulator and it just gets brighter as the uh, amplitude goes up and down. Then there's a filter on it that just cuts some of the high highs and the lows out. Then my, they, so, so if we have this and we add it all together, you get that, put the pitch drop on it, get that, and then here's where the magic happens. It's not too much, it's just a distortion. Right, just makes it sound super chunky. Then a little bit of compression. The opposite thing is going on here. Um, it's boosting the lower volumes and compressing the higher, it's upward compression on the lows, downwards compression on the highs, a little bit of knee, which just averages it out a little more. Then we go in here and I have an EQ, just boosting those highs, making it super crispy. Then a V clip, which I am assuming probably just sausages it out. Like without the V clip, you have a really stabby thing. And this makes it when you do your mixing and mastering, it just makes it easier to where your limiter, your um, mastering limiter is not stomping the shit out of the signal. Um, and then finally the boop, which is pretty simple. Um, it's a little square wave-ish looking wavetable with the same pitch drop on it, right? No pitch drop. 
with pitch drop. Oh, and I also played it instead of playing E. I played a B, like if you listen to it here. That's a B. It's not an E, which, you know, using the perfect seventh, which I will show you here. E, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just always uh, fits with it because it's, you know, harmonically related. So then I put a filter on it just to make it kind of pop a little bit. And then, whoops, then a really small room, right? Just turned the uh, early reflection size down and did that disperser because nut um, OTT depth all the way up time all the way down probably change this yeah change it just a little make it to make it pop and also to bring that Valhalla room out a little more then some V clip to stomp it and an EQ just to fix that up and if you oh and then I think also the final result is also whoops EQ'd some more so if we go in here and play this again Yeah, so that's what I ended up with in the whole thing. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. Uh, I'm going to probably go into this and make it flesh it out some more and finish it up some more and make it cooler. But, you know, for now, we have a kind of tear out sounding gun bass type deal, maybe even like a hive bounce rip off angry uh, future rhythm sounding thing. I'm trying to basically bake the algorithm right now by saying all that shit. But yeah, thank you for watching. And uh I will see y'all next time. Hope you learned something. Bye-bye.